All right. Uh, on a typical year, I might spend some time uh, going through uh, this form of uh, the least squares regression line, talk about why it's called the least squares regression line and how we get it. Uh, but this is not a typical year, so I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't want to overwhelm you uh, when we don't have a, a ton of time to get through this chapter because uh, next Friday is our test. So I will just say that uh, when this form is linear, uh, we can write the equation. This should look familiar. Um, but uh, but statisticians, uh, uh, the world of stats likes to be different. And so instead of the usual mx plus b, uh, they usually put the constant out in front first and then plus bx. So the number attached to x is still the slope. Uh, this a out in here is still the y-intercept. Uh, but I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about this point here. Uh, y hat, which is this y, uh, this, is, this is the little hat above it. So y hat means, uh, uh, is something that stands for, uh, to, to distinguish when we're talking about the y values that we actually put on our scatter plot and the predictions that we're making with our least squares regression line. Uh, you might have also heard the least squares regression line called like a line of best fit. And so uh, when we see y hat, that means that we're making a prediction based on plugging in for x into this equation, as opposed to actually collecting the data and getting whatever y values we get from the data. So if you're saying y, then you're talking about the actual values. If you're talking about y hat and you're talking about the regression line, those are uh, predicted values or values that I would expect on average. So when we go to talk about interpreting values from the line, keep that in mind. All of your values should talk about uh, what is predicted or expected when we plug in a certain amount. Since our goal is to make good predictions, we want to minimize uh, the vertical deviations from the observations to the line. In other words, how far away the point is. These are called residuals. So a residual is basically how far off is our prediction from the data that we actually observe. So the residual is the observed value. We take the value that we actually get. Uh, so let's take like height and weight. Uh, so let's take someone who's, uh, who's six feet tall. And we have, uh, we have two values that we can get. Uh, we have the observed value, which would be, I got data on someone who is six feet tall and they weigh this much. And then the predicted value, which is, I plug in six feet in for, uh, in for x into my equation, and I get out a prediction of what I think a typical person who is six feet tall would weigh based on the data. And the difference between that actual six foot person and the prediction of what this, how much the six foot person weighs, that's the residual. So the residual is the observed value minus the predicted value. Or in other words, y minus y hat, because remember y hat is my prediction and y is the actual data that I get. And so I can actually make a different uh, plot that we will eventually talk about in the calculator uh, called a residual plot that just shows uh, basically a plot of how far off each data point is from the line. 
And so we'll talk about these. But the hope is that the residuals are small. If I have very small residuals, then that means that I'm very close to the line of best fit. So before we go in that deep, uh, let's start. Uh, so minimizing these, um, how far off these predictions are is the goal of the line of best fit. And the, and the line that does that is our least squares regression line. Uh, that we are going to painstakingly uh, go through and, and, and trial and error by hand. No, no, the calculator is going to do it for us. So let's uh, look at an example here. I don't know why those are circled. But let's make a scatter plot. And you might want to put the, this data or these data into list one and list two. Here's what I got out of the calculator. So when I put it on the calculator and told me to give it the scatter plot, that's what it told me. Uh, here's what I did by hand using the scale that I put on here. So that was part A. Part B says calculate the value of the correlation coefficient. What does it tell you? So see if you can remember what that is and what it's going to tell you. And then we'll actually figure out what it is in just a second. Go to your mode on your calculator. And when I scroll down here, uh, there's a button there that's stat diagnostics. Turn those on. It might be like farther down the menu. But make sure your stat diagnostics are on for the thing we're going to do next. In your calculator, we're going to make our regression line. So we are going to go to, uh, we're going to go to stat. We're going to go to calc. And uh, if you scroll down here, you'll see there are ones that say linear regression. Remember that because stats people are different, uh, we like A plus BX. So this is the structure we're going to use. there, it should give you a regression equation. So what is the correlation coefficient? First off, it's r. Correlation coefficient is r. So r No, 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 no. Where am I? So here's the line. R is 0.9127. And R being 0.9127 tells me that there is a strong positive, because R is positive, 
linear association between age of infants and their height. So remember, this was a plus bx. So that means in our structure, the only difference in our when we write our equation is that we're going to have a y hat because we want to tell apart that this is a predicted a prediction as opposed to actual y values that I got out of the data. So we're going to use y hat equals 19.3926 plus 0.6577x. That's going to be my least squares regression line. Y-intercept is at 19.39, so there's my y-intercept. Slope went up about uh, up 0.6577 and to the right one, up 0.6577 and to the right one. So I got a line that looks like this. We can actually do that on the calculator, um, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Next, we're going to interpret the slope and the y-intercept in the context of the problem. Yeah, we're not there yet. OK. So what does the slope tell me? In general, what does slope tell me? In an equation. Rise over run, or uh, what are some other ways to say that? So the 0.6577, what do you mean by rise over run? What, what would that tell me in the graph? Up a certain amount and, over, well, this could be 0.6577 over 1. So that would tell me to go what direction? To the right. Uh, so this is to the right, up 0.6577, and to the right, 1. That would be my directions to go. Well, up 0.6577 tells me uh, that's how far we're moving up. So that is my change in y. That is how much y is changing. and then x is changing by 1. So another way to say that the slope is the amount that y increases for each unit change in x. And especially when we have a decimal. In other words, we're saying since every time x goes up by 1, y changes by this amount. That's what the slope tells me. What does the y-intercept tell me? How do I find the y-intercept on the graph? Or if I asked you in this equation, what is the y-intercept? What do you usually do? You plug something in for x. What do you plug in for x to get the y-intercept? Zero. So the y-intercept is what happens when x is 0. And so we want to interpret these in the context of the problem. Uh, but one other thing we need to make sure that we say 
when we're making these interpretations is that y is going to go up a certain uh, amount. And anytime we talk about y, we don't want to say that it does increase a certain amount, or this is what it is, because we're not talking about the data. We're talking about the line. And we're talking about y hat, which means we need to talk about predictions. We are saying this is what y is expected or predicted to be. Not what we actually saw it to be, because that's in the xy table that we made the scatter plot off of. So anytime you write these interpretations, you need to include the word, uh, whenever you talk about y, you need to include the word predicted, or the word, uh, or like expected, or on average, here's how much it changes. That this is what we're expecting or predicting to happen based on the regression line. So that means for the slope, remember the slope was, uh, Here's how much y changes every time x changes by 1. So what is x in this context? What was x representing? Age in months. So every time that goes up by 1, so for each month that the age increases, y, which is... What did y represent? Height. Height is predicted to increase, because the slope is positive, by this amount. And same thing, uh, you, when you write an equation, you should define your variables. And when we define our variables, the variables we define is going to be the predicted height in inches. Uh, the other way, if you want to, uh, if you don't want to write out defining the variables, you can actually put the variables right in the equation, and that works too. So you can have height hat equals 19.3926 plus 0.6577 times h. Now we've defined the variables within the equation. But if you're just writing y hat and x, then you need to define the variables. And you need to make sure you put y hat there. If you put y equals, it's wrong. Give me a moment to write. So that's to finish off part C. Writing our equation in the line, defining our variables. Now, we are going to interpret the slope in the context of the problem. So let's see, the slope was 0. Point, what was it? 0. 0.6577. Five, seven, seven. Okay. So for every Increase of one unit in x, here's how much y is predicted to change. So for each month that an infant ages, they are uh, uh, their height, this is the y coordinate is predicted to increase by 0 
seven seven inches. Interpret the y-intercept in the context of the problem. So remember, the y-intercept is when x is 0. Here's what y is predicted to be. Here's what I would expect y to be when x is 0. Now, this isn't always going to have an interpretation. right? Think about, think about our visitors to the beach. And we had, uh, you know, we had visitors to the beach between like 70 degrees and 95 degrees, and here's how many people went to the beach. We would not talk about uh, interpret the y-intercept in that context, because that would be, here's what I would ex expect to go to the beach when it's zero degrees out. Well, if it's zero degrees out, the beach is going to be closed anyways. So the y-intercept isn't going to have any meaning. But here I would say that it does. y-intercept is, what was it, 19.3926. So that's going to tell me for an infant who is newborn, Zero months. They are expected or predicted, let's use predicted, to have a height of 19.3926 inches. Next, all right, now we need to look at the uh, calculator here. And we need to do one other thing in this, uh, in this equation. We need to actually put this into Y1. So, uh, go back into your stack calc, and we're going to get the regression line again, except this time we're going to put it into y1. So instead of typing out the whole decimal uh, and writing down and transferring it over and typing it out into y1, there's a quicker way to do it. So watch carefully. Remember, this is in a video, so you can always go back and look at it again. Uh, you're going to go down to the a plus bx, so down here again. I still have my hat. And where we're going to do this is in this place that says store regression equation. Store regression equation. And we want to tell it to store it into y1. And so the menu we're going to go into, watch, is going to be vars, that stands for variables over to y vars function y1. So I'll do that one more time. That was in vars for variables. We want the y variables. We want it to be a function y1. So that way, when I go to hit calculate, it's going to tell me the same thing it told me before. It's going to tell me here's the slope, here's the y-intercept, here's r, here's r squared. We'll talk about what that means tomorrow. But then if I go into y1, into my y equals menu, 
there's the equation. And if I go zoom 9 and graph, here's the line. And what we can do here is we can get uh, a predicted value out. So in other words, uh, what we're trying to do in part F is if a child is five months old, how tall should they be based on the model? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take five and put it where? X. We're going to put it in for X. So we're going to have the 19. You're going to have to read me the decimals again. Point six. Six five seven seven. And we're going to plug in five. Again, we're going to take advantage of our function notation. Instead of putting all these decimals into the calculator, you can go. Uh, here's another use of this y1 key. So we're going to go to vars, over to y vars, function y1. And just like you would do for saying the function notation, you would say f of 5. So we're going to tell the calculator that same thing, y1 of 5. And this will tell the calculator, plug 5 in for x in the y1 function. There it is. Done. Twenty-two point six eight inches. So that means the residual, which remember was observed minus predicted. will be, well, what is the observed value? It's the 23.9. That's the value we observed. That's what the actual five-month-old uh, five child was, 23.9 is the actual observed value. Minus, what's the predicted value? The, val the prediction is what we got out of the line. So that's what we did over here. 22.68 equals 1.22. So this tells me that my observed value This positive residual tells me that my observed value was above the predicted value. Because the observed was larger than the predicted, which causes the residual to be positive, is the order I subtract them. So a negative residual will tell me that the point is below my prediction and below the line in my scatter plot. Last question. Ten-year-old child with this model. Let's do that just for fun. What do I plug in for x? It's not 10. 120, because we're in months. Let's see what we get. Vars, y vars, function y1. If I plug in 120, let's see what happens. Wow. 
98.318 inches. What is the term for this when we're making predictions that are way outside? This is not an infant, clearly. Not an outlier. When we're making a prediction outside of that range, that word, this is what goes in the blank at the end, is extrapolation. That was when we had the visitors at the beach in 150 degree weather. Extrapolation. This would be uh, 8.2 feet for a 10-year-old. <laughs> we would be suspicious that this is actually three 10-year-olds in a trench coat. All right. We'll do another example of this and talk about some more ideas uh, tomorrow.